Something that you might be thinking is super tricky in Swift Data. It's filtering data, right? But is it oh, really? Jesus. Well, let's find out. In this video, we'll be taking a look at how to add a search bar into our app and filter items based on either their title or the category title as well. So let's check this out. So in our main app here, we actually want to add a search bar here using the search bar modifier. Now in order to do that, the first thing you need to do is actually create a state property. So we're going to say here, and this is what our searchable modifier is going to bind to. So now if we just scroll all the way down where we have our sheet toolbar and all this other stuff, just below our navigation title, I'm going to add in the searchable modifier. So we're going to say searchable and then the text is going to bind to our search query and the prompt we're going to give the user is going to be, you know, search for a to do or a category like so cool sweet so now let's just run this and now you should see here that we have our search bar with that prompt in it so if you type in here you know some stuff nothing's gonna happen because it's actually not hooked up to anything at all so we need to fix that and you may be wondering that like okay so if i actually want to query and actually filter data then i should do something like this where i have the query and then within the query, I'll use the filter, you know, parameter, and then we'll use a predicate here to say, oh, you know, if the, you know, item, if the category title, you know, is equal to search query, then do that. But doing this actually isn't going to work. And the reason why is because it's actually not available within this scope just yet. So how would you actually filter data when someone is typing in the search bar? Well, what we want to do is we actually want to have a computer property here where we have our logic to actually filter data. And instead of our for each being bound to this items array, it's actually going to be bound to our filtered data. So here we're going to say var filtered items and it's going to be an array of item and it's just going to be a computer property like so okay cool now i'm just going to type this out together so i can break down what's going on but the first we want to do in here in our computer property is actually check to see if there actually is a query so if this string is actually empty we actually want to return all of the items within our you know query here so we're going to say if the search query is empty so there's nothing inside of it then simply just return the items like so so this is everything that is being grabbed by the query what we actually want to do is we actually want to filter right now just the items based on the name sort of title you know of the to do so inside of here you might be wondering okay you just go use a simple contains but we I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to have a like query. And what I mean by that is that say if you type in the character W, then it'll actually fetch this item because it contains, you know, there's a W within this title. But first of all, going to need to use some kind of high order functions to basically get these items. So I'm going to create a constant here called filtered items. And then we're going to access our items in here. And I'm just going to say compact map and then item in. So this is going to loop through all of the items and this is going to return an array of those items where none of them are nil. And then within here, we want to have a condition where we basically check to see if the entire title contains the characters that someone is typing in. So I'm going to create another concept here called title contains query. And we're just going to say on the item dot title range of the search query and then the options dot case in sensitive is not equal to nil cool so what we're basically saying here that if the items title contains the range of the search query so if it if this if you can find what i type in this text box within this string and it's not doesn't have to be case sensitive so it can be a capital or lowercase if this is not equal to nil then it should return the item so it can find it then return the item 
So we want to say here, title contains a query is true. We're going to use a ternary operator here. We're going to return the item that we're looping through or else with the ternary operator, it just return nil. Now, if it returns nil, it will actually discard of that item. And then finally at the end here, we're going to return our new collection of filtered items. So this is going to just search for the query within that title string matching the case if it's not equal to nil then give me the item if it is equal to nil then don't give me the item and then finally return the whole collection of items to me so i can display that on the ui so right now this actually isn't bound to anything so rather than having our items here we want to replace this with our computed property called filtered items above so we're going to say filtered items like so so let's just run this and then now if i go in here and if I was to search for the character W, you'll now see that it filters out and it only shows me go workout because that contains a W. And if I was to also search for a lowercase W, it matches that as well. So it doesn't matter what case you use, upper or lowercase, it will still match it. If I was to type in some a letter that's not in either one of these characters, well, titles, I should say, like L, it doesn't show me any of the items. So right now, I've only been showing you how to actually filter items based on their title. But what about if you want to filter items based on a category and also the title as well, so multiple properties. Well, I'll show you how to do this as well as how we can improve our UX by also adding some empty states for when you can't find any items. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also as well, let me know in the comment section what you want to see from me, yeah? Because like I say, I do these videos for you. So I'm interested in knowing what type of videos you want me to do so I can, you know, put that in the backlog for you. So like I said before, right now, we're only, you know, filtering based on the actual items title. So what we want to do now is actually access the category and actually check to see if the category title contains what we're typing in here. So after this, I'm just going to create a bit of space. And we want to actually basically just copy what we've done here, but this time on the category. So we're going to say let category title contains query. And then we're just going to say item dot category dot title range of the search query and then the options is going to be case insensitive again is not equal to nil. Okay, cool. So now we've got that. So we are going to need to make a bit of a change here this time on our condition because what we want to do now is we actually want to return the item if the title or the category title contains our search query. And I literally just gave you the answer in terms of what we need to do. So in here, we actually want to use the parentheses and we want to say if either one of these is true, so our title contains query or category contains query, then in our compact map loop, return the item or else discard of it with a nil. So we're not going to return the item. So let's actually see what happens here and test this out. So we'll rerun this. And I'm this time going to give our workout a tag, but we actually don't have any categories. So let's create one. So I'm going to create a new category called life. <laughs> I wish there was like a, like a two pack emoji or, some, or something, but I'll just choose this little cool brother here, man. So there we go, life. <laughs> and then we'll return and then dismiss that. And then on our goal workout, we'll update this and give it the category of life and hit update. And now it's in the life category. So if I now search in here for life <laughs> you'll see that we actually get back our you know workout because it's searching for that tag we take this out and i search for workout it returns work because wo exists in this title so now we're able to search for you know items dynamically based on their title or the category that they're associated with just with this computer property that we added in before which is pretty cool so this is sweet awesome but what actually happens when I actually search for stuff that doesn't exist, well, if I search for Y and there's nothing there, we actually don't get anything. And right now, the screen, in my opinion, doesn't look the best. It looks pretty, you know, 
like something's broken. Well, to improve this, we can actually use the content unavailable view available to us now in iOS 16 for handling empty states. So just below, if we scroll the way down on our content view, what I'm going to do is just below our searchable and our sheet here. Now, it doesn't really matter too much where you put this, but I'm just putting it here so it's easier for you to see. After this, we're going to say dot overlay. And by default, the overlay will actually add content in the middle of the screen. But what's really nice is that with con content on available view, you actually have a default view called search, which allows to use if you're building a feature where it depends on searching for content and you can't find what someone's searching for. So we're going to say, first of all, that if the filtered items is empty, then I want you to show the unavailable content, well, content unavailable view. And there's actually a static property, like I said before, called search like so. So this will actually give us back a default search view when you can't find an item. So let's just run this and see what happens. And then if I start searching here for like random stuff like X, you'll now see that we get this view here that tells us there's no results and to check our spelling or try a new search. So we actually don't need to build our own custom view or create an unavailable view with a title and system in it. You can do that if you want to, but you could just use this default one, which I feel like is pretty nice and it's free. So now we've got a fully, you know, what fledged, you know, to do app, which is pretty nice. So now we've got a fully fledged to do app, which to be honest with you, you know, we, yo, listen, right? We're, we're going places. <laughs> we're going for the Apple Desire Award, man. We're going places with this app, bro. So yeah, it's all good. And if you actually want to learn more about how to handle, you know, other things in Swift data, you should 100% check out this playlist I have on the screen here that has a ton of videos about working with Swift data. And it's actually part of this to do app series free course on my channel that you should definitely go and check out. Also as well, if you haven't already, I've also got a Swift UI course that's free that has over 90 videos to get you started with Swift UI so you can learn how to build apps, you know, really easily because Swift UI allows to build apps so quick, it's not even funny. That's everything from me. I'll see you all in a bit. Deuces.